This small blue gemstone is one of the rarest in the world. And because of the unique way it forms in the earth, Benitoite sparkles even brighter than diamonds, making it incredibly expensive. A single carat can cost over $12,000, but you can only really find this gem in one place. So why is Benitoite so hard to find? And what makes it so expensive? How is Benitoite different from other gemstones? It has a, a brighter vitreous luster. That means it looks like glass, but brighter, shinier. It also has a high dispersion, or fire, meaning it can sparkle more than other gemstones. So, here we are on the top of the mine. This is a private mine. It's part of Benito White Mining Company, owned by John and Dave Schreiner. The company is stationed here because facet gray Benito White can be found in only one location, San Benito County, California. That's why it's the state's gem. There have been um, microscopic deposits found in Japan, but so far this is the only place where you can find it where it's actually big enough to hold in your hand and to put in jewelry. Not knowing how rare it was, miners used to extract Benito White just like any other gem, with explosions and blunt force. And now, the supply is finite. Gemstones like Benito White are generally scattered, but sometimes there's a vein underground where concentrated amounts of the gem collect. Benito White formed when an oceanic plate and a crustal plate came together. One plate slid under the other, and water got trapped in the fault line. Magma then intruded into the fault line and mixed with the trapped water. As cracks and veins formed in the surrounding rock, the superheated mixture flowed into them. Here, the rare element barium bound with titanium, silica, and other elements. Together, they formed benitoite. But finding the gem is a bit of a guessing game. And if John and Dave guess incorrectly, the cost is high. To help them find where Benito White might be, they look for this. The white part of the rock is nitrolite, and the dark part, blue schist. These are two minerals that surround and protect Benito White. If they see the white, it may mean they found a Benito White vein. And when the vein breaks out onto the surface, it's referred to as an outcrop. A big vein or a big outcrop of benitoite was right here and it had fallen against the mountain. That was dug out, dynamited, all the material off the top of it's gone. That doesn't mean there's not stones here. It's all, they're all over the place. Yet a benitoite vein hasn't been found here since the late 1990s. So today, John and Dave are mining in a location they think has potential. They have to narrow down where they think the vein is because excavating and drilling is expensive and they can't afford to be wrong. Core drilling alone will cost them $200,000. Funding is always an issue. Um, mining is not a cheap venture. Normally that's what's holding us back, just having the funds to actually move forward. So as they work up to that funding, they're also working to confirm exactly where the vein is. After they load all the material they excavated, they can begin processing it to see if there's a concentration of benitoite. That starts with sorting. This is the first stage of the wash plant. Um, right over here is where the material gets dumped in originally. So everything above inch and a half uh, gets stopped right there. After this, John can locate larger specimens that need to be acid etched where acid is used to carefully break off the benitoite from its surroundings. They also screen for everything under an eighth inch, and the sorting material goes up a long conveyor belt to be washed in the trammel. The trammel shakes and cleans the rocks before they hit the blacklight room. Benitoite is fluorescent, so the Shriners use UV light to identify the gem without damaging it. After, he screens and washes all the fluorescent pieces and collects the best ones. There's one of them. That is a Benito White. Even though John found some good pieces of Benito White, today's excavation was just okay. 
this is good. Um, we've done better. Still, he and Dave remain hopeful. They're confident that they're getting really close to locating that vein. Finding another Benito White vein would be outstanding. It would change a lot of things. Um, uh, that is the direction we're going in and that we want to go in. It's uh, financially uh, hindering, but we are getting there. But even if John and Dave find a vein, it doesn't mean all the Benito White they excavate can be sold for top dollar. Benito White is a naturally small gem, like diamonds, so most of the rocks they find can't be faceted into a clean, clear gem. On average, you lose about 80% of the stone during the cutting process. It also depends on how clean you want the stone to be. But the remarkable and highly valuable properties of Benito White make all this work worth it. What's also very unique about Benito White is that it is doubly refractive. So when the light enters the stone, it splits into two rays. This creates a doubling effect, giving Benito White a complex internal appearance. Yet on the surface, it looks like light bounces off the gem on all sides. The depth these qualities create is enriched by the stone's color, which shows in the price. In a colored gemstone is color. Color, color, color is the first and last and most important factor affecting value in a colored gemstone. And depth also holds the color, like a deeper stone can have a deeper color and that makes it more valuable. The darker the color, the more valuable the stone typically is. It is amazing. <laughs> Anytime you look at something like this and you think, how in the world <laughs> did this ever happen? That I could be holding something in my hand that represents <laughs> such an amazing, amazing geological formation and event and what had to happen for all of this to occur 